Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about convincing recruiters. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hey Frederick, as a backend developer I work in Python, but I see many jobs opened for Node.js developers and Golang, which I am familiar with, but not to a professional experience level. How can I confidently convince the recruiters that I can learn these new stacks and the underlying concepts and the principles are the same as in the language that I already know. Well, um, you're not going to be able to convince them of that because you're talking to people who are, in essence, uh, well, I don't have a nicer term of uh, term for it. They are idiots posing as people who know something about tech. Usually, they're not idiots as people. Like they are probably lovely people and so forth. But basically, they are doing uh, the, their entire world, all of them they are surviving most of the time based on the illusion that they know how to find a good software developer but 99.9% uh, .9 of them have no fucking clue what the difference is between one programming language and another they're just they're basically just prete it's like i like to say it's uh, if you want to convince somebody that you're really smart you just have to convince them that you know a lot of languages and how, what's what's the easiest way to do that well, you just learn enough to fool somebody who knows nothing to believe that you know more than you do. And that's exactly what recruiters do 99% of the time. So that's why you can't convince them that uh, to, to understand that there is overlap in the knowledge between certain languages and other languages. The only time that you're going to be able to meet a, develop, a recruiter that understands that is if they already have, uh, they're usually on a range. They can range from person thinks that unless you are getting somebody who is exactly according to the specification which is usually like the true beginner people like the the recruiters who don't really know anything then this is not the fit for you the or this is not going to be a fit for your client but uh, then you have the people right behind that who usually go and say okay i know that uh, I should ask for a range because it's practically impossible to find a developer who fits my client's stack exactly because it is practically impossible because the diversity is that big it's not it's not going to work if you're looking for one specific person you're trying to figure out when you're dealing with your customer a range okay what sort of skills and then you get someone who kind of fits that profile and then you have these people who are usually they are the the better ones and these are the ones that will actually understand that if you know something like say Python, then the principles between Node and Golang. I, you can absolutely argue about Golang a little bit because they, I don't want to burst your bubble, but it is a little bit of a jump to go from typeless to typed systems. Like uh, there is a bit of a learning experience there. I'm not saying that you can't do it. I'm just saying that you could discuss that. However. If they are of any quality, these uh, these recruiters, they will understand that. All right, you can absolutely adopt this. But the really sloppy ones, like these, and the, I think they're hilarious. Do you know how many times someone has contacted me for say stating that? Oh, I see that you have JavaScript on your CV. You know, I have this position open for a Java developer, and vice versa. They have no idea what they're like. No, there is nothing. They have nothing. They are literally just the person who is just contacting you randomly because you have computer words on your CV. That's it. And most of them are working with a tool that will help them find people that might be relevant for their uh, for their customers. I've had the same thing for like oh C sharp. I have nothing on my CV that says anything about C sharp as far so, uh, as, so as I remember anyway. But uh, the same sort of thing. And so if you want to leverage this complete ignorance ignorance that they have for most of the time, what you want is to uh, you you can forget about f uh, getting a conversation going with the recruiters who believe that oh yeah or like it's not just the recruiters. In some cases, the companies are actually really adamant about no. We don't want anybody who doesn't know exactly Node, for example. They have to be really good at Node, and that is usually there's usually a reason behind that, and the reason is commonly either that the company is very adamant about it just because of principles, but it can also be, which is a much more benign thing, 
that uh, they are having problems like they need someone who's really good because they don't they might have a lot of J, say junior developers or semi experienced people and they have a lot of riding on the fact that they can get better uh, at a specific type of tech or a specific stack and then you really need someone who knows that because your hope is that that person is going to come in and is supplement all the knowledge within that company so th there it's going to be really hard for you to swing that oh yeah I can you know can learn Golang for example when they're looking not for someone who can learn it but someone who can lead who's someone who can really take charge or push things so you can forget about that but the other that's the good part the, the other range like they will be very open to that under one circumstance and that is that you can prove enough that you know what you're doing about it's about comfort it's about them being able to feel comfortable introducing you to their secret client or client or whoever they are right and that's actually very easy you simply need to start a few side projects or uh, you should do some very basic freelance work or something like that something to just fill out your CV and then you I mean I'm not saying that you lie but you can practically do that they won't have any way of telling uh, if uh, if you're good or not at the language they have no knowledge at all so you can simply state in your description or of your CV or whatever that yeah my favorite languages are whatever and then of course mention the thing that you are applying to and say that I've been working for years because I mean if you've already been working for years in some other language and then you can simply just say that I've been working in this main language for the longest time but I've also on in uh, on my spare time had a lot of interesting product with this language and I really want to move over to Golang or Node or whatever you're doing right and just make the sell like sell yourself a little bit say that you, because they have no idea if you started learning this thing five weeks ago or if you've been doing it for years they have no way of verifying and that's not what they're interested in they're interested in can I feel confident in that if I present this person to my customer they're not going to embarrass me because I can promise you if uh, if they have if their customer feels like you are a completely unrelevant person it might damage their relationship with their customer but at the same time they don't know any better so they it's you're really catering to emotions here dude like you, if you are a little bit of a salesperson or like a little bit tactical with how you structure your CV and how you formulate yourself you can you can convince practically anyone of the recruiters to take a chance on you so what I want you to take away from this is that there is no real reason for you to necessarily be an expert in a specific language in order to transition from that language to another one and the way that you convince people that yeah I should be applicable for this job and so forth is that you pretty much fill out your CV with supplements that very clearly indicates that you have a strong interest in this thing it's kind of what the juniors do that your per you have a perk here because you already have back end experience in another language which weighs heavily like all coding experience is valuable in of, in of itself but you also have to convince them that the specific like, because they remember it's like talking to a person who doesn't know anything about computers they think that computer viruses can just come from the air the, you're, you're dealing with someone who's afraid of witches you have to soothe them and their, un, their ignorance needs to be set, uh, soothed to the point where they just understand that, oh, okay this person seems a safe, like a safe bet. That's what you usually are dealing with. Then there are, of course, the people who are either like really, really good and they actually like that 0.1% to actually know anything, or alternatively, the people who are very specifically looking for someone. You're not going to be able to make a sell there. You're not going to be able to convince them because they're looking for something that you are not. But the people who are looking for someone who just can do the job which is the vast majority these people you convince very easily by just selling the idea that yeah I've been doing Python professionally for the longest time but in my side projects and in my own startup or my own freelance work and so forth I always use foobar whichever language and then you put things on your CV that clearly shows that you have some experience here that is going to be enough for most of them to consider you for a position have a great day